Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to talk about the top five perfumes for March 2023. So, before we get to it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on the tubes. You can also push the notifications bell to get notified every time I post a new video. And you can follow me and uh, go with me on Patreon. A super deco ball spell together there for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. So, you guys, the first perfume for March. Now, March begins in winter, but it ends in spring. So March is one of those transitional months. It can be really weird, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. It can be very cold. There can still be snow in March, right? But it can also be kind of warm. There could be a promise of spring. It's it's when the wind changes, you know, it kind of, there's a warm breeze from time to time in the air, and it just feels special. There's hope in the air. March is a month of hope. So it's still winter, but there's a promise of spring and there's a thought of, well, soon it's going to be summer even, right? So this is why the perfumes are also kind of discombobulated and all over the place in this month. It's not yet April. And April showers are typical for April. It's not about a rain. It's not a particularly rainy and damp month because it's still quite cold. And if it does rain, it could actually freeze. There can be frost in March as well in some parts of the world. So I don't envision March as this particularly humid month, but a rather kind of dry, cold and overly warm month. There's a kind of this like mix. You, you exit with your puffer jacket and then all of a sudden kind of too hot for that and you need to just have a sweater on so you sweat a little so it's a problematic month to say the least so i start the day with something refreshing cool but that has in its dry down warmth labdanum warmth this is my first perfume it is pour monsieur it is a fingerprint magnet let's clean it up a little uh pour monsieur eau de toilette i've newly opened up a new batch i go through these a lot a lot. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you. Mm. What a miracle of a perfume. No wonder Coco just did one male fragrance and then said, you know what? We'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. Because like one is in, she just, you know what? This is perfect. We don't need to do anything more. Yes, I know it's been reformulated a bunch of times. I still adore it in its current formulation. It's fantastic in my opinion. And then the older it gets, the more it sits uh, at home, you know, and the, the darker the, the juice turns and it just becomes um, deeper and deeper. It starts off with that gorgeous Sicilian bergamot, really good quality bergamot. And then it kind of goes down into the ginger. It goes down into the labdanum. It goes down into the warmer hues, into the woods. And it, the dry down of this one is just bomb. Gorgeous. I mean... Oh my God, you know, this is also one of the, you know, if I'm going to save just like five Chanel perfumes, you know, this would be in those five for sure. Uh, and um, I hope they never discontinue it. Mind you, Eau de Toilette, not Eau de Parfum, right? The Eau de Parfum is more fougère. Eau de Toilette is Chypre. Made coincidentally 1955, the same year that the infamous Chanel 255 bag was released. So I start the day with this. It gives me a blast of self-confidence. It goes great with cold weather, but it also goes great with warm weather. It goes great with gloomy gray skies, but it also goes great with those refreshing, invigorating March mornings, sunny mornings. They can be amazing, the mornings in March. And this one, those crystalline, still frosty, but crystalline March mornings, especially in early March. This one's, this one's your baby. For the warmer days in March, uh, as a promise of spring, I adore this one. I also love this one in summer, but in March, I don't know, this month I've been particularly obsessing over it uh, again, and uh, I do have the first batch uh, that was pr uh, produced. Uh, it has been reformulated. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of the current formulation. It is a Guerlain fragrance, and it is Nettare di Sole from the... Aqua Allegoria or Aqua Allegoria uh, collection. Um, it's very overlit, but you can see it. It is in the old version of the bottle and the sticker. Oh my God. It is a mineral honey accord. And I, I see why they would reformulate this one. I mean, it, it was just so potent. It's one of those Aqua Allegoria fragrances that uh, stays 
on you for an entire day. Like this thing has longevity, but it is one of the best honeys out there. Uh, honey can smell quite dirty. Uh, I don't mind that, but this one, oh man, it is so sophisticated. It starts off, it, it's such a transformative, cathartic perfume, just like March. March starts in winter, ends with spring. This one starts off quite cool and cold. It's that mineral aquatic accord in the opening. And the longer you wear it, it dries down to that warm guerlinade uh, honey. And it, it becomes, it transforms into this woodsy bouquet of flowers that have just been pollinated by bees and drenched in honey. It is just, I mean so beautiful and it's rare these days to find newly released perfumes that have that that go through such a transformation from head notes to base notes on the skin uh, aqua um, nectare di sole or sun nectar is literally that and it is such a genius name for perfume because the name of the perfume really matches the nature of this fragrance it is like a sun nectar so it starts cold with that kind of mineral citrusy accord a cold watery accord in the top notes and then it warms up later so this one i mean what an amazing perfume and i i kind of understand why they would want to reformulate it because i do think that the honey part is quite intense for some people and they've toned it down quite a bit in the current formula, but in the current formula, they've turned it into a very boring perfume. No character anymore. So just keep, keep bear that in mind if you're going to try out Nettere di Sole. What a masterpiece. So this one I wear throughout the entire day, really, uh, either in the morning or also in the late afternoon, loving it. The days are also getting longer. You know, by the time March hits, we realize that the days are also longer uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's just a beautiful perfume it matches march i don't know why march also reminds me of the first star wars you know from the late 70s or et the extraterrestrial kind of that type of vibe march for me is et the movie not actually et but the movie et does that make any sense probably not anyway number three oh my gosh another very fascinating fragrance such a conceptual perfume the name doesn't doesn't do it justice. It doesn't suit it really. But I adore my caviar fig accord in Womanity. Uh, what a beautiful bottle. A true testament to Teddy Mugla's genius. And uh, I, I just love this perfume. I don't wear it often, but I adore it. And particularly in March, it kind of right now hits the spot for... By the way... Check out this background. Humanity really suits this kind of environment, this kind of alien planet. Um, oh my gosh. And then you take this off and it's a ring. And then you put it on, on your finger, and then you then, then you, you spray it on. I'm not going to spray it on. It's really intense. This is an eau de parfum concentration. Uh, it is the 80 mil. Or is it the 60 mil? No, it's the 80 mil. Uh, it's the only one still in production, but I think they're going to, they've changed them again. And now they're going to turn this metal, some dust on it. They're going to turn this metal thing into plastic, I've heard. I haven't seen the current versions of it. Maybe they've already done the transformation, but this used to be metal for all of you out there who still want to hunt down a gorgeous piece of Mugler history, design history. Uh, this masterpiece is um, in metal glass and metal and it is a fig accord interesting how it has fig in the top ba uh, top heart and base notes so it goes through the entire process of smell of a fig tree in paradise every, uh, from an alien planet right so it goes to it goes through the fig leaf accord to the fig fruit accord to the fig tree accord those are kind of three different nuances of fig all three are in here. Plus, it has that salty, oceany, caviar, fishy accord as well, which coincidentally is why a lot of people, you know, jokingly say that it smells like, well, you know, fish. But no, it doesn't to me. It's 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 such a beautiful, beautiful conceptual perfume. Not for everyone, but this one should be in everyone's collection because this is a true testament to perfume genius. Really, uh, such a synthetic fragrance that goes into places where. 
you never thought possible. Really beautiful. Just really, really stunning perfume, uh, Womanity by Thierry Mugler. And I, funny enough, I really like to wear this one before lunch or before dinner. Is it because of that salty accord that it has? It kind of stimulates my appetite. It's almost like an aperitivo, like some people drink uh, spritz uh, con aperol or campari soda. I love those as well, but I kind of love to, to, to spritz this one right before I have food, especially if I'm eating out. No pun intended. Like, you know, leaving the house, going out with friends. Or so just I spray this one on before dinner or lunch. And it just hits the spot in March. It's it's a whole vibe. It's a whole attitude. You know what I mean? This is my March aperitivo perfume. A womanity, Mugler. Number four. Oh, is such a, a comforting, soothing blanket of emotions. It makes you feel clean, sophisticated, um nice, approachable. It just gives you such a soft confidence, such a soft feeling of everything. You can achieve anything and people will like you and you will find a way to talk with every human being in the right way because every person has a different energy about them. This perfume kind of relaxes me and allows me to tap into the energy of the person I'm talking to so that I can actually be nice to them in the way that they like other people to be nice to them. Does that make any sense? That would be an alcohol-free fragrance from Hermès. We got Cabriole. Can you focus on it? Thank you, camera. Look how cute it is. It's a 50 ml. They only make them a 50 ml. There's a little kid on a horse uh, on the on this bottle, doing the cabriole, which in French means, uh, or in Italian you could say capriole, when when kids go turn around, you know, their hands go on the floor and they make those little rounds. But also cabriole means capriccio, which also means somebody who's a little bit ca capricious, somebody, a, a kid that's always saying, ah, I'm going to do this even if you said I shouldn't do it, I'm going to do it anyway. So it's a sneaky little perfume. And I think Hermes was not aware. I mean, I almost finished my first bottle. I do have a backup. They did not know how good this was going to be, I guess. So they did not calculate their uh, quantities correctly. You know, this perfume is not a Kelly or a Birkin. They're not playing marketing games with a perfume like this. They literally sold out immediately when they were first released around Halloween. Uh, another reason to love this perfume because it has that kind of orange and black and green, all Halloween colors. It's only lacking purple. Uh, and I love the black stopper on this one. And um, so... Uh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, that um, they did not expect this to be so successful. It's the first perfume that they made for kids. That's why it has no alcohol. Uh, they recommend it for kids three years and up. You can spray your the blankets or the pillowcases with it. It's such a soothing osmanthus fragrance and sandalwood. Osmanthus, if you know, you know. I mean, it's one of the base accords for all Hermes fragrances, or most of them. That typical Hermes smell... How do you recognize an Hermes perfume? It's their Osmanthus. There's something about the way they do Osmanthus that is typical to Hermes. And in fact, Cabriole. Oh my gosh. You know what? I can't. You know what? Let me do it on the hair. Oh my gosh. Hmm. It's a bit aggressive. It's oily a little bit, meaning it doesn't have alcohol. But when you kind of spray it on, it has a really intense atomizer that creates a literal cloud, like a dust of perfume. And when you inhale it, it <laughs> makes you cough a little because it's kind of oily, abrasive slightly. So be careful. Spray it in a big space if you can. But even though it doesn't have alcohol in it, this thing lasts hours and hours and hours and hours. It, don't be fooled by the alcohol-free formula. I don't know if they're going to reformulate this one. This is why I stocked up on the first... Uh, it was just released in 2022, by the way, uh, in October. So I stocked up on the first batches. Bef I'm like, before they reformulate this, I need to get as many as I can because I, it's it's so amazing. I mean, proof is in the amount I used up, <laughs> literally, in just like two months, you know, or three. Man, I love it. And it is this sandalwood or samanthus combo that, like I said, 
I bathe in this, by the way. I don't just do two, three, you know, I do it all over right after I shower everywhere. And then I put the clothes on and then the clothes absorb it a little bit. And there's this aura that you have. This perfume emanates such a gentle, delicate, soothing aura that you feel like, oh, yeah, okay. No matter who you talk to when you're, when you're wearing this, they might not even notice that you're having the perfume because it's not like a compliment getter, but even better that it's not a compliment getter because it still gets to the people, but it's subconscious and it just relaxes them and it eases them into the conversation with you. Pardon me. So it's also kind of a little bit of a manipulative, per, you know what I mean? If you're out to, you need to do something, you need to get something from someone. I recommend trying to wear Cabriol while you're at it. It's a part of the game. Number five, for the evenings or for the night, actually, quite frankly, Cabriol all day, all night. You can also spray Cabriol right before going to bed. Uh, gorgeous, soothing, relaxes you, makes you fall asleep nicely. Uh, but, uh, oh boy, this one, I adore. The, one of the loves of my life, you guys. Uh, and if you know, you know. Uh, part of my youth as well, but... Thank God Dior did not continue discontinue this one fully. It's hard to get. You can only get it in Europe, only in France. Some parts not anymore. Only online at Dior. It is. Dior Homme, l'original eau de toilette. I adore it. Please, Francis Courjan, do something to bring this beauty back. Uh, oh, my God. The early 2000s. What can I tell you? Y2K at its best. Y2K. This is how Y2K can be when it's be what it got to be. It is just the iris in here, the oris root, the, the, the floral accords in here, the, the, the beautiful, beautiful lipstick makeup-y accord for a fragrance that was marketed to men. Olivier Polge, by the way, who is now at Chanel. What a masterpiece. Olivier Polge is uh, one of the nostrils behind this perfume. And, oh my gosh, I adore it with all my soul. It brings back wonderful memories, also difficult memories, but it was such a time of hope when this perfume came out. Like, I felt like the world is my oyster, everything is possible. And I can tell you, every time I smell it, I go back to that place. And this is also why March is a great month, also April. But March is a great month to wear uh, Dior Homme Original because March is also the promise of, of spring. You know that happiness in the air? like You know those feelings you get in March? That, oh my God, everything is going to be okay. This perfume has that exact feeling in it. Also, very, very sexual. I mean, this perfume, when you, when you at least when I wear it and it's dry down, it attracts... <laughs> like a lot so you got to be careful how you dose it it's a warm cuddly fragrance and um that's why if you're going out at night to a club or to a dinner mm -hmm. mm. oh my gosh you know it oh the memories ah so we got cabriol pour monsieur Let, let's do a little bit of this as well <laughs> Oh, what a mess. Oh, my gosh. Mm -mm. Oh, that makeup accord. accord. And you know what? The longer this one sedimentates and gets a little bit older and it gets a little bit of oxygen in it, the more beautiful it gets. It just turns darker and more intense. Oh, what a beauty. If you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. I can tell you, I've had this one for like, what, a year, year and a half, maybe? But... That's besides the point. The point is I'm going to tell you the batch code of the one that I got so you could kind of figure it out. 0K03. Or is it for Dior O? Like the letter O and then K and then 03. So it's either 0K03 or OK03. Uh, that's the batch code. And I did stock up on this one while Demashi was still at Dior. Right now, I would not be able to tell you since um, Francis took over if this one has been reformulated again. I don't. I haven't checked on their website for a while now. I don't even know if it was discontinued. In Europe, at least. I don't know. I would have to check. I would have to check on the French website. 
but these are my top five. Let me know your, oh my God, they're so beautiful. I love, I'm loving all of them. Oh, I'm so happy with my selection this month. It, just, it gives me the gives. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know, uh, let me know your top five for this month and what you think about my selection in the comment sections down below. Never give up on love and subscribe.